All right, welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to start with the uh, rectangle tool. So to get started, like always, we got to start a sketch. So I'm going to hold down the S, the Shift key and the S button, and that's going to pull up a sketch for me. And it's going to ask me again which plane I want. So I like drawing everything on the top plane. Remember, shortcut key P to hide your planes, and shortcut key N to normalize your view. Okay, so we're going to look at this drop down up here in the left right next to the line tool and you'll see that this is our rectangle tool drop down okay i tell my students that anytime you see a drop down with a tool set it's going to tell you that all those things in that drop down are kind of like in the same family and they have similar attributes and they do pretty much the same thing you'll see here we have a corner rectangle with a shortcut key g a center point rectangle with a shortcut key R and an aligned rectangle. Again, all three tools are rectangles. That's why they all live under that rectangle dropdown. So to get started, I'm gonna do the corner rectangle, but I'm gonna use the shortcut key. So I'm gonna press shortcut key G and you'll see that the icon changed to a corner rectangle. So I will do, um, you need to click two points, two corners. So I'm gonna click one corner over here and one corner over here. Now you'll see it brings up our blue text to give us a dimension, but whenever I hover my crosshair over it, don't click on it. That's what everybody wants to do. They always want to click that text box. You're already in it. If it changes from that blue to a text box, that means you're in it. So if I need this to be 2.5 and not 2.536, I'm going to hover over and then type 2.53 or 2.5, I'm sorry, 2.5 and then press enter. Come down here, I need this to be 4.25. So I'm gonna type 4.25 and then press enter. And you'll see we have a 2.5 or two and a half by four and a quarter rectangle, okay? The way you draw these, again, you gotta pick two corners. So you can do two ways. You can click and hold like I'm doing right now and then drag and then when you let go, it puts your rectangle where it needs to be. You can also click once and then click again and you'll get your rectangle that way. So those are corner rectangles, okay? So again, click and orbit around whatever point, it's kind of a pivot point and just place it. Or you can click, hold, and then let go when you get to your destination where you want that to be. And again, to change your dimensions, you press the number over whatever one you're hovering. So let's say this side needs to be eight, not that side. Well, I press eight, enter, and this needs to be five, enter, and I get my dimensions put on that way, okay? Um, remember the escape key backs you out of any tool that you're already in. So I'm going to, to delete all of these. If I do a selection window like this, remember anything that's touching from, if I go from the right to the left, I get a orange box. Anything that's touching that orange box gets selected. That's why I don't have those bottom two. But if I go from the left to the right, I select everything in that blue window. I press backspace to delete it. And now I'm gonna to go to my next tool, which is the center point rectangle. Um, so like the name says, a center point rectangle needs a center point. So just like the other tool, I can click, but instead of it being the corner that gets placed, it's my center point. So I can do a uh, rectangle there, a rectangle there. Everywhere I click, it always is based around whatever center point I click. So the first point I click is always going to be the center point. So we'll start on this origin, click that as my center, and then open up out. And then I click the corner. Now I can still do my dimensions like before. So I need this to be 10 and I need this to be five. And I get a 10 by five rectangle centered on my origin. Okay. If I wanted a rectangle inside of that, also on the center point, let's say maybe I was making a, a shim or a bracket or some sort of plate, mounting plate. I need this to be two and a half and I need this to be, uh, we'll do eight. I now have a piece that I can turn into a piece of sheet metal uh, with a slot exactly how I need it or whatever. I, this is the beginning of a part. I can add all kinds of different stuff. So I have my center point rectangle, and again, I'll back out to show you this. Click a point, that's your center. Click a point, that's your corner. Okay, pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, you can base corners 
or centers off of corners of existing objects. So I can keep going and maybe I'm making some sort of stairs or a pattern of some sort. You can just keep placing centers and placing points and going along that way. So pretty easy for uh, center point rectangle. I'm gonna get out of that tool, select everything and backspace, okay? So now I'm gonna use the line really quick to show you how the aligned rectangle works. I'm just gonna draw a line off in space. I'll draw one here and we'll make a triangle kind of like so. Now I'm gonna select the aligned rectangle. Now what you notice about the aligned rectangle is that there is no shortcut key. Um, not having a shortcut key typically means it's not used all the time or that there's other ways to get there. Personally, I like drawing lines. I very rarely use the aligned rectangle, but if this is what works for you, go for it. And like the description says, it's an aligned rectangle is a tool that lets you sketch a rectangle starting with a line and ending with the perpendicular distance of the aligned side. A lot of big math terms, but basically what it does is it, you click a line, you draw a line, and it gives you a rectangle lined up with a specific line that you have. So we have three lines drawn on the screen. I'm gonna start with my origin and click my other point and then draw my rectangle accordingly. So I don't have to worry about making sure that these lines are exactly perpendicular to here or that this one's parallel, right? If I'm drawing it freehand with lines, I can just click the corners and then drag off into space, right? So what's really cool is now I have all these tabs thrown off and it gives you the same dimensioning tools. So I need this to be uh, 71. I won't be able to change because that's matched to that, but I can change this to 60. So maybe I need that a little taller, but I can start doing aligned rectangles like this. So if I need some pieces off of existing geometry that I didn't necessarily draw, something sort of like this, just click the two points and extend a rectangle out. So then you can see you start getting all kinds of crazy geometric patterns. And this is how you go about doing aligned rectangles. So it always gives you the measurement. Um, again, you hover over it. I need this to be 100. This one I want to be 150. It'll align accordingly. So if you're trying to prove... Uh, the way Pythagorean theorem works, you can show your squares this way. This is a good way to show it. Um, if your kids aren't understanding in your in your class why uh, certain tongue layouts need to be a certain way on a trailer or whatever, it's a nice visual representation that I don't think gets shown all the time um, when we talk about how to do where some of these math terms come from. But this is what I see when I see it. I don't use the aligned rectangle all too much just because... Like I said, I can draw it with a line. It's a lot less clicks, um, a lot less things I have to trim up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the rectangle tool. Again, you could do everything with a line, drawing things, but that's how many clicks to make a rectangle and how many times you have to dimension everything when I can just click twice instead of clicking five or six times to make a rectangle um, and then dimensioning all those lines. So it's good to learn the basis, the basics, but then also how to kind of level that up. So again, all these tools live here. Again, corner rectangle, we're gonna press the letter G, click two corners, uh, center point rectangle, letter R, click from a center point, and aligned rectangle, no shortcut keys, you just click two points and you get an aligned rectangle. So right here, again, corner rectangle, center point rectangle, and a lined rectangle. Uh, that's going to be it for us today. Uh, hopefully these are starting to make a little more sense the more we do. Um, I should have a video next week for you guys on how to do the circles. Um, that'll be our next step, but I recommend playing with it. Take a look at these tools and do what I did and just draw some shapes and get used to how it works and what it asks for when it's clicking and just kind of play around and, and get your feet wet. So that's going to be it for us today. Thanks. Bye.